welcome back um this video could get a little deep um it all sparked by a conversation it was sparked by a conversation last night with uh one of the doctors that works or volunteers at the fire department that kylie and i are part of um and we had got we got talking about jake's cancer situation and I got thinking about my own diagnoses and his diagnosis and other people's diagnosis. And I got wondering if you define yourself by what the doctors have said you've been diagnosed with. Um, of course, this could turn into a smoking public service announcement. You you know people smoke if they get cancer everyone the first thing they say is oh well you were a smoker that's why you got cancer what about all the people that didn't ever that, that never smoked never got uh, secondhand smoke uh, what about the babies the babies that are getting cancer we all have cancer in our bodies and it's about what kind of toolbox we have in our bodies um, and outside our bodies our environments that help us to fight off this cancer you know we, we all have cancer cells in our bodies right now and anything could trigger them so this led me to thinking about mental illness i am a huge advocate for mental illness uh, i've spent most of my life with some sort of anxiety uh depression um that's that's probably what i had growing up as a child uh, an early teenager, low self-esteem, uh, things like that. Um, and then it was not until I gave birth to Kylie that I experienced real uh, diagnosable mental illness and I had postpartum depression. Um, I never wanted to throw her out a window or I never wanted to you know, strangle her, but I was sleep deprived, I was miserable, I had just, I, had, I was falling apart. So I was diagnosed with postpartum depression. I was put on medication, which at that time was my toolbox. I had no other option. I had to take care of my daughter. I had to feed her. I had to bathe her. I had to change her diapers. So at that point, the my toolbox was medication. So I took it, I don't know, a year, weaned myself off. I was good. Then um, a few years later, actually about a year later, I... Uh, I ended up divorcing her dad um, or we got divorced I should say and that triggered a depression a depressive episode I should say um, <clears throat> and I went back on meds because we went to marriage counseling one time one time I was all about it I was like you know let's fix this even though he'll deny it to this day and it still may not be true but um, he as far as I'm concerned he was not only a not a good husband um but he had a girl on the side but that's neither here nor there and he will fight it to this day but that doesn't matter um so after our divorce we went to marriage or after we split the first time um we went to a marriage counselor one time and he said she needs help she cannot do this 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 or this and the biggest thing that he couldn't handle about me was my nightly routine <clears throat> i had this whole routine that i had to do every night before bed and if i didn't do all of them i could not go to sleep well i never knew in the seven years i was with him that all of this bothered him as much as it did so uh the the counselor says well it sounds like you have ocd well, at the time, I didn't know what OCD was. I had no idea. Um, the internet wasn't big like it is now as far as researching things. So um, she says, you should ask your doctor if we can go on Lexapro. It's shown to be really good for OCD. So of course I say, okay, and put that in my toolbox. So I went from one med, went off the med after my postpartum lifted, and then I went on an antidepressant, Lexapro for OCD. It definitely helped a little bit um then i think a lot of my issues were i just wanted to be a perfect mom i wanted to do the best i could um i was working full time it just you know so lux pro helped it was actually my my wonder drug i call it for eight years then 
we're going to fast forward to um, my dad's suicide. In 2008, after several trips for him in and out of psychiatric units, um, a failed, serious failed attempt of an overdose. Um, he took 120 Seroquel. Why they send psych meds by mail order in three months supply, I will never know, but it's an almighty dollar. Um, and over the last 10 years since he has passed, I have realized that either he didn't have the tools in his toolbox to fight the mental issues that were going on, just like some can cancer patients don't have the tools to fight the cancer in their bodies, my dad didn't have the tools or didn't know how to find the tools to deal with his mental issues. Um, so I ended up with uh, an inpatient stay after several panic attacks that I thought were serious uh, physical problems. I would go, uh, my hands would go numb, my legs would go numb, I would hyperventilate. Uh, I went to the hospital for, in the ER um, probably a dozen times and they just kept saying, you have anxiety disorder, you have anxiety disorder, or you have, uh, they'd write on the sheet, uh, major depressive disorder, um, social anxiety disorder, like all these, these diagnoses, but they, they would just send me home with a pill and a follow up with a doctor. Um, generally my primary who was really good at trying to help me through it, but I needed different tools in my toolbox, just like, uh, you know, a diabetic knee might need shots, a, di med a diabetic might just need to change their diet a little bit. You know, every person is different. So what I'm getting at here is if you are diagnosed with a mental disorder or a physical disorder, that disorder does not define you. You are not that disorder. You don't hear people, I never, never, one time, never heard Jake say, I am cancer. I'm cancer. No, he never even, I don't even think he said the word cancer in the entire time. What Jake did is he accepted it for what it was. Um, he's a smart guy when it comes to that and very accepting. He took it for what it was. He uh, built a toolbox and took advice from the doctors, did whatever they told him to do. And I mean, when he came out of the hospital, he couldn't walk. No one said, why aren't you getting up and walking? But if I had a depressive episode, people would be asking me, why aren't you getting up and getting out of bed? Why don't you go, just go exercise, you'll feel better. Nobody told Jake that when he got out of the hospital because it's, it's, there's this stigma still attached. So what my point of the whole thing is, build your toolbox. If you need help building a toolbox, find the right tools that help. Sometimes it's medication, sometimes it's changing your diet, sometimes it's just giving yourself a little credit about what the, the things you do accomplish rather than the things you don't accomplish, which is something that I have learned in the last probably year, year and a half. Um, I didn't accomplish a whole lot of anything back when I was in the peak of my uh, mental illness. Uh, I had a really, really, really rough couple years where my mental illness took over. Just as if um, somebody with MS would have a bad, a bad couple of years and they couldn't walk and they couldn't do this or couldn't do that. So... Um, I just think uh, I want everybody to know don't um, don't define yourself by your illness don't define yourself by your diagnosis just be who you are we all have issues we all just need to find a way to make the best of them and you're not crazy you're not you are not your your illness it's just a part of you that you need to try to fight off and do your best. So um, I hope this reaches the point I was trying to make, um, which it probably didn't because, um, let's see, we're not going to use diagnosis, but I do have ADD as well, and I think that's quite apparent to anyone that knows me. Um, I get off topic very quickly. It's very hard for me to focus. Um, but 
I hope I made the point that I was trying to make and I just want you all to know we're all unique we're all individual and you can't help what you are given genetically or um, the things around you just just be yourself be who you are don't define yourself by some label don't just don't do it and if you need help let me know because I'm getting kind of good at this so I hope you all have a fabulous Saturday and I will see you next time. Bye.